Alright, let's pick this thing up where we left off. Last time we went ahead and got this torque box installed, we fixed part of the firewall, as well as installing that kick panel. So now what we need to do is just do the exact same thing on the passenger side, um, and then put these little floor extensions in, so that way hopefully very soon we'll be able to get the floor pan in. Don't know if that's going to be this video, but we'll find out. For right now, I plan on just grinding down those welds a little bit, so that way it's nice and flush. And then we're going to go ahead and take this piece and try to fit this thing in here and make sure that we got it all lined up nice and good. So it's going to take a little bit of tweaking. You know, we got some work to do to get this thing to fit just right, but it's pretty close. So the one thing that I'm learning about working on these cars is that like when it comes to welding and making things fit, it's really a lot of putting it in and taking it out and putting it in and take, you know what, uh, forget that part, okay? It's, it's just a lot of adjustments, okay? We got to grind a lot, we got to weld a lot, we got to make things fit, which is exactly what I'm doing here because at some point I got impatient and I cut it way too short, so now I have to add metal back to the thing that I already removed metal from. It's very redundant, but this is like how things go. You know, you think it's only going to take you a day, it takes you four months. I mean, that's just the way that this stuff goes. But that's okay, because even if it takes us four months, we'll eventually get it done by doing a little bit each day. I mean, that's how you eat an elephant, one bite at a time. But luckily today, I'm not eating an elephant, I'm just painting a firewall extension for my floor pan. It's, it's way different. I imagine that elephant probably doesn't taste very good. I mean, neither does paint, but I'm not eating the paint, but that's besides the point. All we're doing really is just trying to prep this piece so that way we don't have any more rust because I'm sick and tired of rust. Okay, so I got this thing cured overnight. I actually sprayed a whole other layer of that spray on there just to make sure it's all nice and covered. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this thing clamped in place and then we're gonna remove any of the paint where any of these holes are or any of the spots that we're gonna be welding. So yeah, let's get it going. I know this ain't perfect, but I would say this is pretty dang good. So one cool tool that I just learned about is called a butt weld clamp. Yeah, I know, let that one sink in for a bit. A butt weld clamp. <laughs> it's actually kind of nice because it just sits between the two areas and then you're able to just weld between the gap. It's kind of a small gap, but you're able to do it and it helps keep the two pieces level. It's actually a really awesome tool. I wish I would have known about this a long time ago. So back here, it's pretty decent. Everything's lined up pretty good. I still got to do this little piece right here. Uh, but other than that, this side is pretty much done. Oh man, I gotta say this 106 degree weather plus the heat index being like 120 is starting to really get to me because if any of y'all are in Texas right now, y'all know it is hot. I mean, I'm sweating through my jeans here. So I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with how this thing turned out. I gotta clean up these welds a little bit better. Um, you can see inside here, we got it all connected nice and neat and you can see it still follows all the same lines like how this one goes, this line here. Everything fits just like it should. So now what we gotta do is start working on this side. So interestingly enough, in 67, they didn't have a torque box on the passenger side. So we're gonna be adding one after the fact because, well, we're gonna have way more power than what the stock motor had in it. So in order to compensate for that, we wanna make sure this is structurally sound. The issue is it wasn't here originally. So now we're just gonna have to kind of figure out as we go how we're gonna get it in there. The big thing that I'm questioning is whether or not we put it on top of the frame rail or below. Let me show you why. So when this thing was stock, there wasn't any torque box here. So the issue is that right now this is designed to sit flush on top of here. So this sits up just a little bit higher than what was on the other side over there. So what I'm gonna have to do is probably mount it to the bottom side, because if I do it on the top side, this thing's gonna be all lopsided from that panel sticking up underneath it and sandwiched in there. So yeah, I may have to modify it just a bit. The other thing that's an issue is over here, there used to be this little piece here that would hold this part of the firewall in. I cut that out because there's a part of the torque box that has to come up through here. So I'm probably gonna have to cut this edge off. But before I do that, I really need to take care of this kick panel because it's also got some issues. As you can see from exhibit A, uh, there's a little bit of rust. So the other issue is this pillar here, it looks like it's been crushed in at some point and it actually tore through the metal. Um, I mean, it got hit pretty good because it actually ripped off from here. So at some point I'm gonna have to replace that as well, but I can't remove that unless if I brace all of this. So I really don't want to mess with that just yet. I really just want to get this so I can do the torque box first. The more I look at this thing, the less I want to do it. So instead, I'm not going to do the kick panel right now because I really don't want to have to pull the dash out. It's just kind of a mangled mess. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this rocker panel so that way I have a nice clean slate for mounting the torque box to and that way there's no hidden rust behind it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut open a little bit of a hole in this little kick panel so that way I can gain access to my clamps. I really need to make sure I can maneuver this thing around. Luckily I have an air hammer which makes that a hell of a lot easier to do. 
it cuts through the stuff just like butter. This may not be the best way to do this, but it's the way I'm gonna do it. Then once I had a nice hole, I basically used my cutoff discs to make the hole slightly bigger, so that way I had just enough room to get in there and do what I needed to do with my clamps, as well as just aligning the torque box to fit properly. Look at that, nice. It actually works pretty good. I think that could work. So I learned something today, and that's that I think I'm gonna have to do the upper portion of the torque box on this side, and then do the lower. I'm not sure yet, um, but I found some new rust that I'm gonna have to fix first. Let me show you. So if you look right there, you can see there's some holes, and there's a little bit of pitting. So what I'm thinking is I'm just gonna cut a little bit extra, and then make a square, and then weld that in there, so long as it's not too bad on the inside. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and mock up a little piece for that rust, cut out the old stuff, weld in some new stuff, and then hopefully we can start getting this torque box together. So the rust actually went a little bit deeper than what I originally thought, so I cut a little bit bigger of a square than what I wanted to, but I think it'll be worth it in the end because I really wanted to make sure there was no rust hidden back here. I cleaned it all out with a wire brush and then sprayed it down with some steel it. After that I went on to go cut out the steel that's going to replace it, and I ran into a little bit of a problem. Man, my stupid grinder's dying. Look at that. That's so dangerous. Oh, no. Yeah, my poor grinder has seen better days. I've had this thing for years and it's been through a lot of work, but I think it's finally just giving out. My poor grinder's finally dying. But that's okay, little buddy. You served your time well. It's kind of exciting. I actually just got something in the mail. Turns out they're having a sale at Home Depot, so I got a fresh uh, angle grinder and now it's battery powered, so whether that's a good thing or not, we'll soon find out. But I needed something because the one I had was broke, so just came in. I'm kind of excited. Okay, we got a little paddle. I really hope this is the paddle one because I don't like the ones that are switches. Okay, good it is. It's a paddle. Because the ones that are switches just don't feel right. Nice. Yeah, it's a paddle one. So that should be pretty easy to use, so that's cool. Man, it's kind of big though. I mean, I got pretty decent sized hands and that's kind of... You gotta kind of grip that. That's, hmm, we'll see. So that's kind of cool. It's got like a quick release thing. How does this work? Well, that's different. How the fuck is it? Okay, there we go. Check that, it's got like a little quick release thing for changing the angle. That's kind of cool. The other one was just like a screw type, so that's cool. Another plus is it uses the same batteries as my weed whacker, so that's kind of cool. Nice. Feels pretty balanced. Mmm. That sounds kind of weak. My question is how long is it going to last? I guess we'll just have to find out. Alright, let's get this thing welded on. So one cool thing about this build is that I've been able to reuse a lot of steel. This steel is actually from when we redid the frame rails on this car. I had a bunch of leftover because I didn't end up using the whole replacement piece and it happens to be just the right thickness for these rocker panels. Now when I went to go weld it in I kind of did a bunch of little spots and kind of worked my way around because I really didn't want it to warp too much and I also didn't want to go right through with the heat. Big thing here is that these rocker panels are actually galvanized steel so I had to wear a respirator because I did not want to risk getting any of those toxic fumes. Like, it's really bad if you breathe that stuff in. So if you're going to be doing this, I definitely suggest wearing a respirator. I know it's annoying, but it's better to save your lungs than not. Well, so far I'd have to say it's a little bit weaker than my other one, but it's holding up pretty good so far. So I will say the one thing that I've learned from working on this car is that it really helps to have good tools. Because, man, when I got my first power drill press like this, it changed my life. Okay, like when you have to drill a bunch of holes for spot welds, it is so much easier to do and so much more precise using a drill press than it is using a hand drill. Like, I could do it with a hand drill, sure, no problem. But like, man, it just makes your life so much easier to have the right tools. Okay, so I got this patch nice and blended in. I probably need to do a little bit more work there, but I got the lower portion in here and it's fitting up pretty good. There's a couple bends I'm probably gonna have to make. But now you can see why this is gonna be almost impossible to do with the lower first. Because if I try to slide this in, there's just no room to get it past because it's hitting all the way up in this corner up here. So what's happening is it's getting stuck up on this piece here. So it's very hard to get that top piece in when the lower piece is in. So I'm gonna have to do the top first. So I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of a gap 
uh, and it's mainly because of this little spot right down here is kind of flared out a little bit so I'm gonna hammer that back a little bit so that way hopefully we'll be able to bring this whole thing over just a bit it's lined up pretty well here but I think it just needs a little bit of tweaking That'll do. So you can kind of see how this is flared up a bit where this is a little bit more flush. So I'm just going to hammer this back a little bit and then we'll retest fit and see how everything's fitting. It's much better. I need a little bit of tweaking, but I think that should bring it in pretty good. So now we're hitting up at the top, but you can see that the gap is closed a little bit. So we're still hitting out at the bottom a little bit, but I'm gonna try opening this up a bit and see if it ends up a little bit more flush. All right, let's see what that looks like. After many more whacks with a hammer, I think we finally got it. There's only just a little bit of daylight, but I think once I get this thing kind of zipped in here, I'll be able to tap that corner just a little bit to get it nice and flush as it gets warm. Um, but this is still lined up nice and good. So this bottom piece is looking like it's fitting really well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the top piece on and then see if we can get this on under it. Okay, so I got the top piece in, so now we're gonna go ahead and attempt to get the bottom in and see how everything's fitting. There's like no room to move around in here. Oh damn it, I'm sweating all over the camera. Okay, so it's not clamped up, so there's still room for this thing to get like moved a bit to make sure it's fitting in there nice and tight. Um, this side over here is looking okay. The alignment's not the greatest. I'm gonna have to adjust this a bit. You see there's a lot of play. Uh, and part of that, I think, is because this top plate is not pushed in properly. So I may have to mess with that a little bit. The other spot that's a little bit off is over here where these two pieces are. I can clamp them together, but they're not quite flush. Like, they're not quite lining up. So I'm going to have to bend this piece a bit to get it to fit right. Um, as well as this bottom piece here. They're not really lining up very well, so I'm going to have to adjust that too. But, yeah, a little bit of hammer work. And we should be able to get it. All right, so I finally got this thing clamped on here pretty good, at least outside of the car. Uh, it's pretty well lined up. I had to do a bunch of hammering and bending and just kind of forcing things to fit. So it looks okay now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and try to fit it in the car and just see how it is. So this is why this stuff always takes a really long time because it's a lot of bending, hammering, fitting, all that kind of stuff. It takes a while, but getting this to fit right now is going to save us a lot of time in the future. Okay, so after a day of fiddle digging with this thing, I think I finally got it in here pretty well. Uh, we've got it all lined up pretty good. I got to make a few minor adjustments. Uh, you can see that our alignment hole is still pretty good right there. Inside here, I found I'm going to have to drill a hole out for that little drain hole there, but that's okay. All these pieces are lined up pretty good. This edge here, I'm going to actually hammer back flat once we're in here. Uh, I got to drill a couple holes for the spot welds, but other than that, it's pretty good. Everything down here is lining up. We'll basically clamp this down as it heats up and it should be pretty good. Um, and even this piece here is all lined up pretty well. So now all we got to do is I got to take all this stuff out and go ahead and get it all prepped and primed. It's pretty much just a bunch of rinse and repeat, but pretty soon we'll have this thing knocked out. So as soon as I started getting some good momentum, I just knew that something was going to happen. So I started drilling out these holes for these panels so that way I could get them prepped for paint. And as I was doing the painting, I realized, wait a second, I've got a problem. I ran out of steel it and uh, it's kind of hard to protect all the interior walls that we're not going to be able to get to after we weld this torque box in there. So unfortunately it doesn't come until Sunday so I'm like three days behind now. So yeah fun. I'm sorry this is taking so long. But luckily for you we have the power of editing so you didn't have to wait those three days like I did. The unfortunate side effect is it's going to take way longer to get this video out and here we are like four months later and yeah anyway we got the steel that we ended up painting all the pieces and i ended up painting in all the areas where we were not going to be able to reach again later on now the problem with steel it is it's kind of got a cure for a while so i sprayed this thing and then i guess what i had to wait another like day before i could actually go and install this thing because i didn't want to ruin the paint or like start welding and then it's just going to fall apart so yeah that's why these things take so long Okay, so we got this thing all nice and cured up. You can see there, that's the tape line, but that's all completely covered. You can almost barely see where the patch is. If you really look, you can see it. But uh, yeah, it should be good. It's nice and solid. So now what we gotta do is get that piece up in here and get everything fitting right. So one thing I wanna check before I get too far is to make sure that these two pieces are still level um, because there's a tendency for it to sag a little bit up there. But luckily there's a little bit of play so I can kind of move this just a little bit if I have to. You can see there that it's fairly level right now without me doing anything. So we should be pretty good. I just need to make sure that this is completely straight when we weld it up. Let's do it. Uh, I'm a little bit low on gas so 
hopefully we have enough so when it comes to the final fitment i was really really anal about this i was like i want to make sure this is perfect so it took me a whole day to get this thing lined up just right my angle finder broke so it turned out i ended up using my cell phone because there's a nice app you can use on there you'll find it it's free to use and it works really well um, and I used that just to make sure I was sitting at 90 degrees and once I was sure that I was at 90 I ended up just tacking this thing up a bit just to make sure it would stay in place and I kind of made adjustments as I would go Having the extra heat in there from welding makes it a little bit easier to bend But even then it's still not hundred percent perfect So using a combination of the floor jack some clamps and my hammer I was able to get it to sit completely flush in all the spots that I needed it to it was a little bit tricky but by the end of it it was all looking nice and good especially when you use the jack to kind of apply a little bit of force now i probably shouldn't have been using wood here but you know hey we use what we have okay you got to make it work you got to do what you got to do there's force welds that i did on this other piece that you can't see in this image but it's really easy to get to they just weld right to the rocker panel after doing the rocker panel i started working on the top side this was probably the easiest part to do i just used a whole bunch of clamps and a whole bunch of hammering and stuff like that just to make sure everything was completely flush um, and yeah, I mean you just get clamps where you can and you weld where you can't then the very last piece is gonna be this lip that I was adjusting with a hammer for the longest time I ended up using my air hammer just to what like knock it completely flush against the side of the frame rail Just to make sure that it was gonna be completely flush and There was no gaps and then I just did a straight weld all the way down just to make sure it was completely seam welded up Later, I'll probably fill this up with some seam sealer, but for now this is good Okay, so I got this thing welded on here pretty good we got all these sides done, done up really nice, and you can see that our alignment is still really good. The front part looks really good as well. Everything's lined up really nice. Even all the corners here got lined up. This got lined up good, so I'm really happy with how this thing's fitting. Um, the only thing is, is that the piece that's gonna cover this is not quite fitting right, and part of that is because I cut it a little bit short. So I gotta kinda tweak this thing a bit to kinda get this thing to work right. I may actually have to order a new one because it's just not quite the way I want it to fit, so we'll see what we're gonna do there. So for the most part this thing's done, but I still gotta do this pillar up here and I gotta do this kick panel. I just haven't quite figured out exactly how I'm gonna do that yet, so I think for the sake of time we're just gonna finish this thing up where we're at right now, and then I'm gonna come back to that in the next video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, it's been a ton of work, and uh, I'm really happy with the progress, but we got a lot more work to do, so stay tuned.